All right, so here in example three, we want to find the derivative of f of x equals 2x squared plus 1. So I'm going to first start by writing out my definition of derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So the first thing I want to find out is what is f of x plus h? All right, so that means I'm going to put x plus h into the original function. So if you need to, you could come to the side and write an empty function, in other words, replacing x with parentheses, so leave out the x, and then inside of the function in place of x, we said we're putting in x plus h, x plus h. So I'm going to go ahead and remember what we did last time, x plus h squared is actually x squared plus 2xh plus h squared um, plus 1 there. So I'm going to go ahead and square that binomial, distribute the 2, bring down my plus 1, and this actually turns out to be my f of x plus h. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that back into our formula. Okay, so there's my f of x plus h. Now we're asked to subtract off the original function and I'm going to shorten this process even more than we did last time because when we subtract off the original function it uh, changes the signs of every term in the original function because we're going to distribute that negative. So we actually end up with negative 2x squared and then negative 1. So we're just going to write down the original function, but we're going to change the signs in every term in the original function. Okay, so we're subtracting off every term from the original function. So a little bit of a shortcut there to kind of make the process go a little bit faster. Now what's nice, as soon as you subtract off or change the term in the original function, when you look across, um, you should be able to cancel a few things. So 2x squared and negative 2x squared cancel out, plus 1 and minus 1 cancel out. And what we should be left with then is a bunch of terms in the numerator that have h in them. All right, so there's another little shortcut that I want to talk about is we have mentioned that if we plug in a 0 right now in place of h, that we actually get 0 divided by 0, which is the indeterminate form, which tells me that I need to simplify. I need to reduce this fraction. And one easy way to do that actually would be to rewrite the original um, as two separate fractions. So 4xh divided by h plus 2h squared divided by h. So I can divide h into each of those separate terms at the top. So what happens is these h's cancel and these h's cancel, leaving me with one h at the top. So what we can actually do as another shortcut is to divide h into each term from above. So we're going to get 4x plus 2h. All right. So a couple of shortcuts along the way can help this process go a little bit faster. Okay. Now we're going to find the limit as h approaches 0 of this function. So as h approaches 0, so we're going to put a 0 in place of h, so we get 4x plus 2 times 0, so our derivative turns out to be 4x. So I'm going to write that right here, f prime of x is equal to 4x. Okay, so there's our derivative. Notice that once again the formula for our derivative has a variable in it, so the slope is not the same for the entire curve. It's going to change based upon what x value that we plug in. So here it says to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1 comma 3. All right, so I want to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1 comma 3. So this is important. We want to know what we're going to plug in to find the slope of, at this point. Well, we need to plug in the x value of that point. So I'm going to plug a 1 into the derivative. So 4 times 1 then gives me 4. So this is the slope of the tangent line 
at the point x equals 1. So whatever, wherever x equals 1 there, that is the slope of the tangent line. We want to find the equation of this tangent line to the curve at that same point. Okay, so um, think way back to when you were working in a previous course. We have something called the point-slope formula. Uh, the point-slope form of a line, y2, or let's do this, uh, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Okay, this is our point slope formula. And remember what this does is it takes in two things. It takes in the point, the x and y value of a point, and it takes in the slope. And if you feed the information to it, then it's going to tell you the equation of that line. So it's y minus, well the y value of our point is 3. We know that. So let's put y minus 3 equals the slope that we're going to use is the slope that came out of that derivative. So the slope of the tangent line is 4. And that's x minus, what is the x value of the point? That is 1. So we actually end up with uh, y minus 3 is equal to, let's make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to distribute the 4. So that's 4x minus 4. And then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So the equation of that tangent line would be y equals 4x minus 1. Okay, so this is the equation of that tangent line. So we have a line that goes through this particular point, and we know it also has a slope of 4. All right. For example 4, we're asked to find the point on the graph of f where the tangent line to the curve is horizontal. In other words, we're asked something a little bit different this time. This time, we're asked, to f we're asked to find out where do we have a slope of 0. And we actually don't know the x value for which that occurs. So I'm going to give us a function here. f of x equals 5x squared plus 4x. So this time we're actually looking for what x value has a particular slope. And of course we said earlier that if we have a slope of 0, that's referring to a horizontal tangent line. Okay. So before I can actually do anything here, I need to find the derivative. The derivative is what tells me slopes of tangent lines. So I'm going to find the derivative. Okay, so our derivative would be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And we're going to use a couple of our shortcuts that we've already talked about here. So the limit as h approaches 0, um, f of x plus h, and I'm going to even do this a little bit faster. I'm going to say, well, that would be the original function. I'm going to put parentheses everywhere. I have an x, and I'm going to put x plus h inside the parentheses. Then we know we're going to subtract off the original function, which means we're going to have minus 5x squared, and then other terms, the other term is going to change signs too. It's going to be minus 4x. All of that divided by h. All right. And we're going to start to simplify that first part here. We already know that x plus h squared, we already know what that's going to be. It's going to be h squared, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we know we can distribute the 4 into the parentheses here, so that's 4x plus 4h. And then we know what we're going to subtract all from that. Okay, so let's do one little final step here, and then we'll be super close to where we want to be. All right, so we have 5x squared. We're going to distribute our 5 plus 10xh plus 5h squared. Then we have all of our terms that we want to look for any like terms and see if anything can combine and cancel out. So you have 5x squared, and that cancels out with minus 5x squared. Uh, we have 4x, and that cancels out with negative 4x. 
So we notice that everything that we have left over now is going to have an H in it. Okay, so let's pick out what we have. 10xh plus 5h squared plus 4h, all of that divided by h. And then we said we can actually just cancel out h with each term from above. So this h will cancel out with this h, and I don't have a parentheses or a line anymore. h goes into the first term, we end up with 10x. h divides into the second term, we end up with 5h. h goes into the last term, we end up with 4. So now we're going to find the limit as h approaches 0. So I'm going to plug a 0 in place of h. Well, we know what's going to happen to that term. That's going to cancel out. So I'm left with 10x plus 4. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as f prime of x is equal to the formula 10x plus 4. So this is our derivative. Now remember what the derivative does. Okay? You plug in the x value of any point. And this right here, the output, remember, tells us the slope of the tangent line at that particular point. Okay. So the input is the x value of any point. The output, the output here is the slope of the tangent line at that point. Well, what do we want the slope of our tangent line to be? So this time, we're actually going to set the slope that we want. So we want the slope of the tangent line to be 0. So we're going to set the output of our derivative to be 0. So we're going to, in other words, we're going to set the first derivative, set the derivative equal to 0. So we're going to do a little bit backwards this time. So I'm going to set the derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to set the output to be equal to what I want. So 10x plus 4. I want that to give me 0. I want to solve for the x value that makes that happen. So pretty easy equation to solve. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. We end up with 10x equals negative 4. And then we're going to divide both sides by 10. So I get x equals negative. Um, reducing my fraction, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I get negative 2 fifths. So the x value of the point that has a slope of a tangent line of 0, so the x value of that point would be negative 2 fifths. What if I wanted to find the y value of this point? So I know the x value is negative 2 fifths. How would I find the y value of that point? Now another thing that's really important to remember is that this is telling me something about the original function. So if I wanted to find the y value of this point, I need to plug this y value back into the original function. So I'm going to say, OK, well, if x value of negative 2 fifths goes into the original function, what is the actual physical point on the original function of f that would yield this a tangent line that has a slope of 0, this horizontal tangent line? So let's go back to the original function. It was 5x squared plus 4 times x. So if I plug a negative 2 fifths into the original function, then I could come up with what that y value would be. So that would be 5 times, that would be 4 over 25. So I square that fraction. Um, and this would give me 4 over 1. That would give me negative 8 over 5. And what's really nice here is that this and this cancels, leaving with a denominator of 5. So we end up with 4 fifths minus 8 fifths, which keep the same denominator, subtract the numerators, we get negative 4 fifths. So if I would like to know the y value of that point on the curve, then I need to go back to the original curve, plug that x value back into that original curve or to that original function to find the corresponding y value. Before we go on to the next example, I want to kind of give you a visual of what we just found. Um, I'm going to pull up a graphing calculator called Desmos. And this is the 
kind of the tangent line, kind of a tangent line graphing calculator, which kind of gives you the ability to kind of play around with the, the tangent line and what it looks like. And I have put in the equation of our function that we just looked at, 5x squared plus 4x. And if you move this slider bar, um, the a value here is a particular x value, and the line that we see is the tangent line at that particular x value. So we see here that the tangent line here would have a positive slope, and then over here the tangent line has a negative slope at all of these x values. And remember, what we were interested in this particular problem is where the tangent line is horizontal. We wanted to find out what x value had that horizontal tangent line. And we see that that horizontal tangent line would happen at negative 0.4, which if you put negative 2 over 5 in your calculator, you get negative 0.4. And then there's the y value. And if you put that y value, that fraction, into your calculator, you'll see that you get negative 0.08. So what we were looking for, what we were hunting for, is not a particular x value. Um, we weren't given a particular x value. We were hunting, we had a particular slope that we wanted to achieve, or a particular tangent line. We wanted to know what x value had that particular tangent line. Okay, so sometimes we can give, we can uh, have a set slope that we want, and then find the x value that matches up with that particular set slope that we were looking for.